Hello and welcome back to another tutorial. My name is Mike Davies and in this video I'll be showing you how to create multi-platform content in four easy steps using GIMP. I'll be using GIMP version 2.10.20 which is the latest version of GIMP at the time of this tutorial. But of course, before I get into that, don't forget to check out my website at daviesmediadesign.com. As always, I have tons of GIMP and Inkscape tutorials on here. You can get more by becoming a DMD Premium member. And I have tons of free software help articles, so definitely check that out. You can enroll in my GIMP 2.10 Masterclass for Beginner to Pro Photo Editing on Udemy. You can check out any of my Skillshare classes by visiting gimpschool.com. And as I mentioned, you can get more with a premium membership to Davies Media Design. I'll include all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So I'll be using a couple of free stock photos as my assets for today's tutorial. This is from Unsplash. You can come over here and click the little down arrow. I went with the medium download for this palm tree photo. I also went with this photo here of a female model. So again, you can click this little down arrow and I went with the medium photo here again. Here are the designs we're gonna be creating for today's tutorial. So here I have five different designs. So this is what I mean by multi-platform. So for those of you who are into design or marketing, whenever you're designing for social media accounts, each platform usually has its own dimensions that it recommends you use. So here we have a Pinterest long post for this content. And if I come over here, you'll see I also have the Insta story. So this is for Instagram. Here we have an Instagram post with a four by five aspect ratio, a Facebook post, and a Facebook banner. Let's get started with the first step here. So that's gonna be designing the actual template. So I won't show you how to design all five of these templates for the sake of time. Let's just go with the social media Insta post here. So I'll start by going to File, New. And this post is gonna be 1080 by 1350. We don't need to adjust the advanced options because this is gonna be for the web. So I'll click OK. So here is our blank Insta post template. So what I want to do is have a background layer. In my case, I'll come over here, reset my colors to black and white. I want the background layer to be black. And then I'll come over and create a new layer. And I'll make sure this is named shape. I already did this ahead of time, so it's already named shape for me. And with the fill width, we'll just go with transparency for now and click OK. And what I did here is I grabbed the lasso tool and I just created a random shape on the right side, that way we have room for our model image on the left side, and then for that palm tree image on the right side. So once I have the selection area drawn, I'll come over here and change my color to like a grayish color. This can really be any color as long as it's different from the background color. And I'll just click and drag this inside the selection area. So now we have a shape. I'll hit Control Shift A to deselect that. Finally, I'll create a text box. So to do that, I'll come over here and create a new layer. And I'll name this text box. What I wanna do when I'm creating my text box is I want the text box to pretty much be the same exact size across all the templates. That way I can very quickly paste in a text box that I create ahead of time. So in this case, the text box I created is gonna be 570 by 630. And I'm gonna fill this in with white and click OK. So here we have our text box. I'll hit the M key on my keyboard. And now I'm just gonna move this to wherever I want the text box for this template. So in this case, right about here. And finally, I'll come over and just decrease the opacity of this to around 75. So that's gonna be my template. I would do this for all five sizes or however many sizes I need to create. And of course, I can save this by going to File, Save As. And I've already got this saved right here as Insta Post Template, so I won't save over it. But it will end in .xcf, which means it will contain all of the layers. So I'm gonna hit Cancel in my case, but you guys hit Save. And let me just exit out of here for the next step. So in my case, I've designed my templates ahead of time, so I can open those up into GIMP. I'll come over to my File Explorer where these are located. And here I have a Content Templates folder. And by the way, DMD Premium members will be able to download all these templates. So what I can do is just highlight all the templates here, click and drag these over to this little Wilbur icon and release. And that's gonna open up all five of these templates here so you can see the five different templates I created. So they all have the same size text box and they all have this little element on the right, the shape element, and then a background layer. 
Step two in this process is going to be gathering the assets you want to use in your designs. So let's say you're a graphic designer and a client gives you a photo, a graphic, and some text they want you to include. This is all going to be part of a campaign that they're going to use across multiple social media platforms. Well, you're going to want to gather those assets you want to use in your designs. So in my case, I'm going to go to my folder where I have the assets I want to use. So here it's called the assets folder. So I'm going to just shift click on all three of these and click and drag these onto the Wilbur icon and release. And I'll hit convert. So here you'll see we have the two photos and then I created some text ahead of time. You'll notice my text box is 570 by 630. That's the same exact size as the text box we're using inside of our templates. But now that I have our assets, what I'll do first is come up top and check the size of this. So this is a bit too large based on what I'm going to need for my designs. So I'll go to image, scale image, and I'm just going to scale this down based on a percent. So let's go with 75% and hit the tab key and change the interpolation to no halo and hit scale. So this will likely be the largest size I'm going to need. Now what I want to do is I want to copy this into a feature of GIMP called the buffer. So the buffer is basically a feature that allows you to copy multiple objects simultaneously. So it's kind of like hitting control C on your keyboard, except you can do it for multiple compositions, multiple images, etc. So what I'll do first is open up the buffer window. So I'll go to windows, dockable dialogs, and come down here to buffers. So here is the buffers window. Now I'm going to go to edit, buffer, copy named. So that's going to copy this image here we have selected. And we'll just name this female model and click OK. And I also want a smaller version of this one. So I'll scale it once again. I'll go to image, scale image. And let's just go another 75% of the current size and click scale. And I'll save this one too to our buffer. So I'll go to edit buffer, copy named, and we'll name this one female model 75%. And I'll click OK. So now we have our two photos copied here in the buffer. Now I'll come over to our little palm tree photo here. I'm going to rotate this image and then I'm going to add a pink tint to this. So I'll go to image, transform, rotate 90 degrees, and then I'll go to colors, colorize, and I went with this pink color. You guys can copy this if you're following along. And I'll click OK. And I'll click OK again. And there is our pink palm tree photo. So this one is also going to be too large. So I'll go to Image, Scale Image. And let's go 75% on that and click Scale. And we'll save this scaled image. So I'll go to Edit, Buffer, Copy Named. And we'll go Palm Trees. Hit the Enter key. There is our palm trees image over here in the buffer. And I'll scale this one more time. So image, scale image, and one more time, 75%, no halo, scale. And we'll save this. So we'll go to edit, buffer, copy named. And we'll name this palm trees 75%. And I'll click OK. The last asset we need to prepare is going to be our text. So we only need to copy one version of this to our buffer. And what I did here was I just created text using the text tool. And so we have three different text layers in the background layer. So what I'll do is I'll just hide the background layer. And now I'll go to edit, buffer, and because we're copying multiple layers here, I'll go to copy visible. And this allows us to name this, so I'll name this text and click OK. And now we have all of our assets over here inside the buffer. That brings us to step three, which is going to be placing the assets inside of each of the templates we created. I created five templates ahead of time, but I'm just going to use three templates for the sake of time here, just to keep this tutorial from getting too long. So let's come over to the first template we want to use. So I'll go with this template here, which is my Instagram template. And I have all of my compositions over here inside of the buffer. So this is like a quick access now. And because this is going to be 1080 pixels wide and our 75% image is 1080 pixels wide, I'm just going to go with that. And down here at the bottom of the buffer window, we have five different icons. So we can place this as a floating layer, place this inside of a selection, place this as a new layer, or place this as a new image. And finally, we can delete this. 
So I'm going to go with the third option here to place this as a new layer. So there is our image now inside of this composition. I'll hit the M key on my keyboard and just drag this over a bit, maybe to about right here. And we can also scale this down. So Shift S to grab the scale tool. And we can scale this down until it basically comes up to the end here of this little shape area or until the top of the image goes below the top of the composition. So about right there is gonna be about as small as we can get away with. And now I'll hit scale. So hit the M key, just move this into place. There is our image. Now let's come over to the shape layer. So what I'll do here is create a selection from this shape and I can do that by hitting Alt and then clicking on this layer. If that doesn't work for you, you can go to Layer, Transparency, Alpha to Selection. Once that's selected, we can come over to one of our palm tree images. In this case, we can go with the 75% version. And I want to place this inside of my selection, so I'll click this option here, the second option in my buffer window. So that's going to be too small. I'll hit Control Z. Let's come back to the top one here. And once again, I'm going to click to paste this inside of the selection area. So that's perfect there. And now you'll see we have a floating selection. So in order to make sure this does paste inside that selection area, inside this shape, I'm gonna come over here and click the anchor icon in the layers panel. And that's going to anchor that to the shape layer below. And now we have the palm trees in the shape of our shape layer. So I'll hit Control Shift A to deselect that. Finally, I'll come over to the text box and now I wanna add the text in here. So what I'll do is come over to the text asset and come over here and click on the third icon here. That's gonna place my text as a new layer, as you can see here. The reason I don't wanna anchor it to this layer is the text box has a bit of opacity on it. And if I anchor the text layer to the text box layer, the text will have a lower opacity like that. So that's why I wanted to place this on a new layer, but it does place it exactly inside of our text box there. And that makes it super easy to place text. So let me show you another example here. So this is going to be our Instagram story. So we have pretty much the same setup here. I'll start by clicking on the background layer. And here you'll see the height of our composition is 1920, but the image doesn't have to be the entire height of this. But just to play it safe, I'll go with the larger image here of the female model. So I'll come over here and click to place this as a new layer. And now with my move tool, you can hit the M key to access that. I'll move this up and I'll actually move it over a bit too. And I do want to scale this. So shift S to scale it and we'll bring this in a bit. Make sure it overlaps with the boundaries of the composition there. So it's not displaying any of the background color below. And I'll hit scale. And once again, hit the M key to grab the move tool and we can just adjust the position of this. Now we'll come to the shape layer, alt click, or again, go to layer transparency alpha to selection and in this case I'll go with the smaller palm trees photo and I'm going to place this inside the text again so the second option here the second icon and I can also use my move tool to move this around inside the selection area before I place it once I'm ready I'll click on the floating selection layer and then click the anchor and control shift a to deselect that and there is our palm tree shape Finally, we have the text box layer. I'll decrease the opacity of this. Click on the text composition here, and then come over here and paste this as a new layer, and that will paste that nice and centered inside the text box. All right, so there's two examples. I'll do one more, and then we'll move on to the last step. So here we have our Pinterest long template. I'll come over here to the background layer, and let's go with the larger image size here and paste this as a new image. And we can move this up with the move tool and shift S to grab the scale tool. We could scale it in just to have a bit more of the model in there. M key and drag this up. Then we'll come over to the shape layer. Alt click to select that. And in this case, we could probably go with the smaller palm trees photo. So I'll click to insert this inside the selection area. M key to move this around. And once that's ready, we're going to anchor that floating selection to the shape layer. Control Shift A to deselect that. Click on the text box layer. Once again, I'll decrease the opacity of this. 
click on the text composition and we'll click to paste this as a new layer. And in this case, you'll see what happened here. It pasted this in the middle. So I'll hit control Z. The reason for that is this text box layer was not cropped to the content here. So in other words, I created this rectangle on a full size layer. So what I have to do here is go to layer, crop to content. That'll crop everything down to the size of the text box. So once again, I'll try this. I'll click on the text layer and click to paste this as a new layer. And there you'll see the text is pasted inside that text box. All right, so we've created content for multiple social media platforms. Now it's time for the final step, which is going to be saving and exporting this content so that you can upload it to those platforms. And first what I'll do here is I'll save this. So I'll go to file, save as to make sure I don't save over my original template. And in this case, I have a folder here and I already saved this once. So here is that Pinterest long. And when I click save, it's gonna ask me in my case if I wanna replace it since it already exists. I'll hit replace. And that will save this as a .xcf file with all the layers intact. That way I can edit this at a later time if I need to. I also wanna export this so I can upload it to something like Pinterest. So usually what they recommend, I'll go to file, export as, they recommend exporting this to something like a JPEG file usually. Sometimes you can go with the PNG, but a JPEG is gonna be a smaller file. So I'll go .jpeg. And once you're ready to export this, come over here and click the export button. And you can choose whatever quality you want. I'll go with 90 and click export. And that's how you create content for multiple platforms in GIMP. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, you could check out my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Davies Media Design. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can also check out any of the links to my resources in the description of the video. But thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.